If you're tired of the standard business and marketing fundamentals, frameworks, and funnels, <laughs> you need a little mischief. Get ready to turn up the volume on the CEO Mischief Maker podcast, where you access conversations with seasoned business owners who have smashed through mindset barriers, innovated the standard boring business and marketing playbooks, and executed future-paced strategies with bleeding edge tools and tactics to micro fail their way into massive success and growth. We are Mindset Impact Strategic Catalysts, helping innovative entrepreneurs focus. We are CEO Mischief Makers. Ready to make a little mischief? Hey, 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 Mischief Makers, welcome back. It's, uh, it's the time of the week where we get to talk about details. We get to dive into strategy. And my wonderful guest, Monica Louie, um, is joining us again. And she mentioned in the last episode, strategy. And she really tied into, Monica, you really were, were tying into strategy and how important it was. So take me a little bit deeper into that. You mentioned in the last uh, conversation about being an actual consumer of this platform, of the ads that you uh, you also generate. You're consuming other people's ads and buying things and realizing what works and what spurs you to engage with a particular ad. Tell me a little bit more about that. What are there specific components that uh, that make you do that? Are there uh, is it the way it's it's created? Or I know you talked about reels as a total novice in Facebook ads, what should I look for? Yes. So I encourage everybody, if you're interested in running your own ads, I encourage you to pick up your phone, scroll through Facebook, scroll through Instagram, and you, you know, certainly pay attention to the ads that appear. Um, but any, even organic posts, posts that catch your eye, posts that make you pause for a second, that just, you know, cause you to hesitate, cause you to click the see more button so you can keep reading, right? What are those things that stand out to you? And that's what I'm always paying attention to and we're incorporating into our ads. So when it comes to the creative, most of the time, the creative graphic or video of the ad is what will catch our eye. And um, so we'll look at what about it is catching our eye. Maybe it's a cool design, maybe it's bright colors, maybe there's some contrast happening. Um, we do a lot of animated images. So we'll just have a little bit of animation on the images. So that little bit of movement can help catch your eye. So what I encourage you, because that, that will always change. There'll always be new things that people are doing that will stand out. Nowadays, we have the reels. So it used to be, you know, we would have maybe a two or three minute video in the ad. Now we've got this really quick micro content, fast moving that is catching people's eyes. And so we're capitalizing, capitalizing on that. We know that Facebook and Instagram are pushing those out like crazy. So we're encouraging our clients to create those and we're pulling those into the ad. And of our clients that do make those regularly, we are constantly asking them, what are the ones that you're seeing? get great engagement, great, you know, what can we learn from those or even use those exact reels in our creative so that we can capitalize on that and get that engagement into our ad. So that's what we're looking for as far as the creative. Also with the ad copy, I want to look at, you know, uh, having it well spaced out so it's easy to read on mobile, but then also what is that hook? What is, you know, usually it's the first line that will grab your attention. So when you're looking at the posts and the ads that are coming through your feed, what about them catch your attention? Is it a strong statement? Is it a question that makes you think? You know, and, and so we are always thinking about crafting copy that will uh, compel the audience to take action, um, will capture their attention and then compel them to take action. Yes. So with that though, it changes constantly, doesn't it? I mean, you talked yes. about reels, you talked about before it used to be two to three minute long videos. So how you are, you obviously have your finger on the pulse of how these ads are changing, how the engagement is changing. Is there anything, any advice you can give from your clients where anything that is unifying at all? So why maybe one reel might uh, really hit it big and have high engagement versus another reel. Any specific feedback you can give us? 
Yes. So we have found that of when you looking at the reels, whether they're, you know, just organic on your on your page or profile or in the ad, when you have the thumbnail have some text on there, that can help to stop the scroll and capture attention. Um, so you just want to make sure that it's engaging, that if you are going to have an offer in there, of course, which is what we have with our ads, um, we have tested putting the call to action at the end of the reel. We've also put it in the middle of the reel to let people know what the offer is in the middle of the reel. Um, and so those are some things that we're, we're testing with reels. And then we test our ad copy, making sure that our ad copy is relevant according to the topic of the reel. So one of our clients does, um, he does really helpful, quick, entertaining, informational videos about building a custom home um, or, you know, updating your home or doing an upgrade or project on your home. And so it's really helpful content. So we'll take that information as we make a very helpful ad and but then, of course, we have the offer. So for him, he has a $47 checklist that is just a no-brainer. It is a low-cost product. And oftentimes with low-cost products, it can be hard to get a great return because they are low-cost products with your ads. But his converts like crazy, and he's getting an amazing ROI on his ad spend because of it's just a great product that is an easy yes. So I think about him a lot in his strategy because that's something that we can, all can do in our with our offerings is offer an easy yes an easy low cost product that is just a no brainer offer that people will want to grab yeah and that so that checklist it must not be you know just a simple checklist of first do this then do this then do this right it's going to be much more in depth than that and yes. if that it's almost like a mini course probably yeah, it's it's pretty in depth. It's got a lot of content, but it's a checklist, and, and that's what it is. And then he has an order bump on there, so that increases the average cart value, um, which helps with that ROI. Uh, so he's got an order bump of having the editable version, which is it also an easy yes. So he gets the easy yes because it's a no brainer checklist that for his space, it's going to save the the customer thousands of dollars potentially on the remodel or the build of their house that they're doing. And then the editable version is a lower price, but it's an easy yes to say, yes, I want the editable version too. So just what can you do to really help your audience? And again, the goal is to help them. Um, what can you offer to help them and make it easy for them to say yes? So I can take that, that tip, that tool, that strategy and apply it to any niche any, any, so you just mentioned home building, it sounds like mm -hmm. from that niche, as opposed to a course creator or a coach, um, as opposed to an e-commerce company uh, or e-commerce business, any niche, you can take that same concept and uh, that whole idea of no brainer, right? This is extreme value for a very low price point. And it, you'd, you'd almost feel like a fool to say no. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's such a low cost product when you think especially compared to the cost of building a home or you know remodeling your home uh yeah. that that's just an easy of course I'll grab it so it flies off the shelves you know the the virtual shelves and and it just works so well so what can we do how can we apply that idea to our own businesses to help our customers in our own niche yeah. So take me through, say, an example of, let's say, a, a course creator or a coach who uh, is doing Facebook ads and they have whatever their funnel is like. Typically, they're going to do, let's say, a webinar or a challenge, and uh, they're going to give that value up front. And typically, it's for free. Uh, mm -hmm. If you go to a webinar or if you do, a, say, a five-day challenge or even a 30-day challenge I've done, um, that that the amount of energy and expertise if it, it truly is teaching and it's not just fluff to try and get you to buy something, um, which of course that wouldn't be a client you would take. Um, but if that value is there and it's free, how that your ad and that whole concept of that low ticket offer that gives value, then how, how are you seeing the back end and do reels work for that as well? Absolutely. So what we'll do in that situation is um, we've got clients running evergreen webinars and live webinars also. Um, so we will run ads to the free offer to the webinar. 
And um, so we get creative there. And of course, we can test reels there. We can test static images, animated images, short little videos. Um, and so that will promote the free webinar. And then on the back end, of course, they're offering some kind of paid course or something. You can on your thank you page have the tripwire for your low price checklist if you want to offer that there. Um, but then you can also offer it um, down the road too. Maybe it's after the cart closes, maybe you know, if they didn't take you up on the course offer or whatever, then you can offer that as a lower price, maybe downsell um, down the road. So that's the strategy. What we'll do is we'll have those lead ads uh, for the webinar, and then we'll have retargeting. So we'll retarget the people that opted in for the webinar and then promote the paid course usually uh, is what it is on the back end to those people that express an interest. And so to have success with that strategy, it's all about the targeting and then all about the messaging uh, in the ad. Know that you are getting your ad in front of the right people. So one of our clients, she does this strategy. Um, she has multiple evergreen products in the crafting space. And so multiple evergreen webinars in the crafting space. And so we will make sure that our ads are speaking to her ideal audience member. And then of course, for targeting, we will use her existing customers and create a lookalike audience of those people. So we can find more people who are like the people who have already bought her course and reach more people to bring them into the, to the webinar. So that's our strategy there. And especially if you have a client like that, who probably has um, a large list of that audience that you've you've re already targeted a lot of those people. You can that look that's where a lookalike audience really is a beneficial thing, right? Because you have yeah. a large number of people you already know want this product, so you can just just basically tell Facebook, okay, go find me more people like this. But you you know what Absolutely. like this is, right? Absolutely. Yes. So the best way to do that is when you have that list of paying customers, if your goal is sales, then you want to you create a lookalike with that list of paying customers. If you don't have that, so you have to have a hundred people on that list in order to create the, the lookalike audience. And so of course, if you've got thousands of people, then Facebook is going to be able to look at them and have a better, you know, sample size to help find those lookalike people. But you could also do it if you don't have a hundred people yet, you could also do it with the people who opted in for your webinar. So it's a lot easier to get 100 people to opt in to sign up for your webinar than it is to have 100 sales. You'll eventually get there. But if you're not there yet, then take your list of people who've opted in for your webinar because they have expressed an interest in the content. And then you can start there with that lookalike audience. Wow. So, all right. CEO mischief makers. I mean, Monica just gave you all kinds of strategies and specific tactics to be able to apply to your own niche and your own business. Is there any last piece of advice you would give someone who, like me, is looking at this black box of a business manager and just, like I said, my head hurts every time I go in there? Um, any last piece of advice for people like me who still would like to dabble in this? And I know you can't totally dabble. You have to understand what you're doing. You're not going to waste your money. You're going to waste your money if you don't understand the basics. Um, so what, what, what advice can you give those of us who are, I like to, I want to use this. What should, specifically should I focus on uh, so that I don't waste my money? Yeah, well, you just said it. So I would recommend focusing on one strategy. We did talk about a number of different strategies, number of different ideas, number of different offers that you can promote with your ads. But I would choose one strategy. What is your goal right now? Is your goal to grow your email list? Then you can start with offering your lead magnet and just focus on that campaign. Test different audiences for that offer. Test different ads for that offer. And then really, you know, put your money there, focus there. And then once you see that you're getting the results that you are looking for there, that's when you can say, okay, now I'm going to add in that retargeting campaign for my paid offer. So I'm going to retarget the people that have opted into my list. Maybe you've got an email funnel or a webinar funnel, something like that. And then you're going to retarget that. So I would start with one thing at a time. I know you talk about focus a lot on your show. Um, focus, I think, is the is the biggest component when it comes to success. The I've worked with a lot of different businesses over the years, and the ones that are the most successful and reach that success faster are the ones that are focused on one thing at a time. Okay, hold on. If your mindset was shifted you were inspired to innovate and you were spurred into action, don't just move on with your day. 
focus, my friend, and take a few minutes to visit ceomischiefmaker.com to learn more about the value that was shared with you today. Please act now and create some CEO mischief of your own. 